Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and currently I'm printing out all of the enclosure pieces for the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M. And right now I'm printing out the four rear guard pieces that's going to go along the side, just like these are. And the thing is, when it comes to making this enclosure, Flash Forge recommends that you use PETG filament because that filament is more resistant to heat. That's definitely going to be building up in the printer when you get all the enclosure pieces put together. And PETG can also be very hygroscopic, which means that it absorbs moisture from the air easily, more easily than PLA would. And that means that it's a good idea when you're printing with PETG, especially if you're printing in an environment that's very, very humid, that you do so from a filament dry box, just like this one here. And this filament dryer is on and it is currently drying the filament. So even though the filament has already been dried for several hours before I started the print, I'm also keeping it on and it's still heating during the printing process. So that just makes sure that it stays nice and dry and that the humidity does not start to affect it, especially when there's a good long print going on. So now I'm gonna show you how I rigged this up in order to be able to print this PETG from this filament dry box and it doesn't require any tools. It doesn't require any additional hardware that you cannot 3D print. So you don't have to go out and buy any kind of metal inserts or anything like that. All you need is a couple of tubes and you're good to go. So let me show you how I did this. So inside of this filament dry box, and by the way, this is the fixed drive filament dry box. I did a review on it. You can check that out if you want. But I'm printing right now with this yellow PETG filament. And you can see it. It's the one that's further to the back and you can see it rotating right there. And you can also see the filament that's being pulled through one of the holes on the filament dry box. And it's going through this PTFE tube right here, which is why I always recommend that you have a spare PTFE tube on hand so that you can do something like this if you ever need to. So it's really easy. Just take the filament, pull it through this box, and then you're going to run that filament through the first PTFE tube. Now the thing is, if you have a long PTFE tube, then you can probably just get away with that one tube and run that one tube from the box all the way to the printer. But if you have some smaller PTFE tubes, you have to join them together. And that's where this piece right here comes in handy. I'll leave a link in the description for this. And this is just a very quickly and easily printed part that allows you to join two PTFE tubes together without the use of any kind of hardware. So all you have to do when you're running this cable through is that you run it through one of the end caps right here because this one and this one screws right on. So you push that through and then when you screw these on to this middle base part right here, it secures the tube in place so it doesn't pull out. And you do that on both sides and then you'll be able to simply run the tube up into the tool head right there on the top and then it fits right down into the tool head just like the regular white PTFE tube that comes already installed on the 5M does and what I did in order to just sort of get it out of the way as you could probably see a little bit here all I did was took some of these uh, twist ties and I just twisted it and just got it up out of the way just connected it to the black cable it's not the most elegant thing in the world but it does work it's out of the way so I don't have to worry about it grabbing on or getting smushed or anything like that I also want to talk about the angle of which this filament is going into the machine and I'm not sure if this is going to be the case for everything but the reason why I have this on its side like this and where the front control panel is actually like over here instead of it just being in the front is because I noticed when I was trying to print this from another filament dry box eventually it would get twisted like the the force from pulling the filament was twisting the dry box and when I turned it like this so that it had a more direct path a more straight path through the tubes into the printer it didn't do that anymore so yeah that's why I just have it you know to the side like this and it's been pulling the filament and it hasn't been pulling it off its axis and this has roller wheels inside the filament dry box so it makes it easier for that filament to just get nice and rolled.
And granted, I am well aware that this is not the best cable management in the world because this is just flopping all over the place. But hey, I've been printing like this for many hours and it works. You can uh, figure out a way to connect it the way that you want to so that everything can look nice and neat and straight and everything. But this right here, it may look a little funky, but hey, it's working. So I'm just gonna roll with it. And this is good for when you're trying to print with more hygroscopic things which is great when you're trying to get more consistent, successful prints and you want them to look good with as little defects as possible, at least defects that are caused by too much moisture. So that is pretty much it. I'm gonna continue building out these enclosure pieces and I'll show you and let you know when everything is done. But uh, yeah, I hope that you found this useful. So thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.